Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to yet another episode of Ghost Stories. This is going to be the last episode where the show is in its current format. That is because I only have so many stories to tell. I've only been alive so long, and while I have had a lot of paranormal things happen to me, there is a finite limit to the things that I have experienced, and this is going to be the last bit of stories. I'm going to tell one of my own stories, and then two from uh, both sides of my family, or my mother's side, and then my uh, wife's side of the family, two things that I can pass on that I would say are relatively unaltered from the telling of the tales as there are first-hand witnesses that I have spoken to. Now, the first story of mine has to do with what I guess you would call a uh, malevolent entity or something, or perhaps a shadow person. If you click the link down there in the description, it's going to take you to the very first image result when you search shadow people on Google, and this is something that very greatly disturbed me back in the day when I first searched this, but I'm distracting a little bit now. The story goes as follows. I was probably about 9 or 10 years old, very, very young, very impressionable, laying in bed, trying to go to sleep, and like most 9 or 10 10 years old, I was having a very hard time going to sleep. I wanted to stay up, wanted to play my video games, wanted to read my books, I wanted to play with the toys, yada yada yada. But I, I was always kind of a scaredy kid, and I was just rolling around in the bed, rolling, 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 moving my stuffed animals around. Might not have been the manliest of things, but I used to sleep with lots and lots of stuffed animals, and I thought it was really, really awesome at the time. But, and distracting again, I kept rolling, and one time I rolled over and noticed that there was an extra person in the room with me. I, I, I don't know how to explain it other than uh, you roll on one side, you look at the uh, you look at the room, I'm a little bit bored, I'm going to roll over on my left and look at the wall. Ah, I still can't sleep, not comfortable, roll back over. And what the shit? There's another person there. What is going on? I, I, I didn't know what to do. I just kind of froze. I mean, I was a little kid. You ever get so scared that you that you that you're frozen in place? Your body goes back to that old uh, predatory instinct, kind of like they say in Jurassic Park. You think, oh, if you don't move, they don't, it won't notice that you're there. That sort of thing. That's exactly how I was feeling. In my room with me, there was an old hunched woman with a shroud over her head, just standing there, like like a fat creepy ass druid uh, skin solid white not 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 uh, porcelain I would say but think like Darth Vader pale just as, as pale and as dry and as wrinkly as skin could ever possibly be like it hasn't seen the sun since its creation it was just there and it wasn't doing anything it was just kind of sitting there and it was it was looking uh, at, at the window actually it wasn't even looking at me just kind of sitting there and not doing anything getting really creeped out don't know what's going on and I, I stared for hours. I didn't know what to do. It was just so immobilized with fear. And then slowly, very, very slowly, this thing began to turn its head. And it looked at me. It looked directly at me. And it had red little eyes. And when I say red eyes, I'm not talking about the bad 80s horror movie Demon with glowing red eyes. It was uh, just red pupils. Red, uh, not pupils, my bad. What's the, it's the iris, the red color. Like, I have blue eyes. So, the, so I have a black pupil and blue eyes. They were red. They were a very uh, crimson, hateful kind of blood red. Looked at me with a lot of scorn and just stared at me eye to eye for some period of time. I, I, I don't know how long. I was shitting my pants. I felt like I was having a hard attack this whole time and just put a finger up to her lips and very quietly mimic the shh kind of noise no noise just made the little lips and I knew that just meant to be quiet and uh, as much as it sounds uh, odd to say just kind of faded away just two or three seconds faded out wasn't there anymore didn't exist was gone and that uh, that disturbed me very greatly as a child. I didn't really tell that story to many people. I didn't tell my parents. I didn't tell anybody else. I always thought the little shush, the finger thing was a warning. But, I, you know, eventually big mouth. I like to talk. I did tell people nothing bad ever came from it. So I don't know what that was. Maybe it was a, a, a sleep paralysis. I have had sleep paralysis before. Sleep paralysis is a very terrible thing if you've ever experienced it. But I don't believe this was uh, sleep paralysis because I've had experience with it. It didn't feel the same. And I tell you that story not because it's impressive, but just because it's the very last personal ghost story that I have to tell, and because somehow it does tie into this next ghost story. Now, that picture that's down there in the description that many of you curious subscribers have probably clicked on is going to show you of a picture of it's going to call a shrouded figure and hat man. Now, many, many, many years later, probably 10 years later, when I was first starting to date uh, my girlfriend, who is now my wife, uh, they have a, they're, uh, she's Chinese, their family, Cantonese Chinese, Singaporean Chinese, they came over here, that's a little bit uh, important later, and her grandmother died, and in a kind of a peculiar way, and they have their own different Chinese customs when it comes to death, uh, what was it, uh, melting a candle and leaving water here, and these, these things that I just don't really understand, but... 
She told me about her grandmother. Grandmother's a big hulking woman, not a very pretty woman either. She lived in uh, China actually and worked at a rock quarry. She fled China when the Japanese invaded and uh, she got married ra rather late in life because she was a very big, bulky, angry, mean woman. She was like part Mongol, which is one of the reasons that my wife is a little bit larger Chinese and has larger breasts. Thank God, grandmother. Uh, so she was a big, scary woman. And she didn't like white people. She didn't speak English. She especially didn't like black or brown people of any kind. But that, you know, Chinese can be racist too. And what happened is about, I would say, a week to four or five days before she died. This is coming from both her father and Jessica. I've heard the story twice. Uh, they came into my grandmother, to her grandmother's house, and she was packing. And they didn't know why. They asked her, "Why are you packing?" She says, "I'm going on a trip." And uh, the, 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 her father is admittedly confused because this woman doesn't really leave the house. Her English isn't very good. She doesn't have anywhere to go. You know, no close family or too many Chinese friends in the United States. Dad's like, okay, well, you know, where are you going? What's going on here? And she says, uh, oh, well, I'm going with the, uh, the white guy. Have you seen him? And the, her father is again confused, and he looks around the house. He thinks that, you know, maybe my mother's gone too old. She's lost her mind. Somebody's broken in the house. He checks around, doesn't find anything. And she's still packing. He's still confused and asks her, what are you talking about? And she said, you didn't see the white guy with the hat. And uh, uh, her, my uh, wife's father says, no, he didn't see a white guy with a hat. And she's like, oh, well, he came and told me that I'm going on a trip. You know, we're going on a trip soon together. And uh, told me to pack my things and get ready. This kind of disturbed him. He thought that his mother was uh, slipping into uh, senility, dementia, or something, uh, but didn't really pay much attention to it. She wasn't hurting herself, wasn't hurting anybody else or others, so he just kind of let it ride. It was very odd. And the only thing that would even make this memorable is the timing of it, because uh, just about a week later she died. It was, I think it was, a matter of fact, the very next day she fell while trying to walk up the stairs to the house, slipped, uh, broke her hip, and went to the hospital, if I'm telling this story correctly. That was the next day, and she went to the hospital, a very, very old woman in her 90s, poor health. She died in about a week, and when they went back home, her suitcase was sitting there, mostly packed, ready to go, just kind of how it was before, and nobody had a good explanation for it. They didn't know why uh, she saw a man in a hat, and what's, what's even more interesting is she, she was very specific. She said it was a white man in a bowler hat and a... Uh, Kind of a kind of a, a dress coat, like a London fog dress coat, and uh, we, they found it very very weird. And it didn't have any relevance to me until my my wife told me this story. Now I thought it was creepy, very very creepy indeed, uh, given my experiences with the paranormal. And I just kind of filed it away under under the memory banks. And then I would say I was probably in my 20s almost when my friends introduced me to listening to Coast to Coast AM and they were talking about shadow people. And the show is ultimately hilarious. I mean, schizophrenics call all the time to complain about shadow people watching them. And uh, I got bored, so I googled shadow people. And the first image result was a picture of the shrouded uh, woman, which I remember from my childhood, and the bowler hat man, which I remembered from my wife's story. And it was very disturbing. I was not a happy man. I was pretty upset. I remember my hand uh, shaking a little bit when I clicked that uh, picture. And that was that. Now, the next story that I have to tell is disconnected from the two of these. My mother, when she grew up, she grew up in a very extremely, extremely bad household. I'm talking uh, my grandfather, her father. You don't talk about original gangsters, not like OG, like, uh, you know, uh, black gangsters. But he was this old country ass kind of drug dealing, wheeling, dealing, thieving bad guy killed god i don't know how many people he killed uh horrible things that i don't want to talk about in this commentary but the family was broken on drugs uh abused in ways that you that you would expect to see something coming from uganda or rwanda or the congo and they were all terrified of this man he was a very very dangerous man and uh my mother said one night he had done some kind of drugs or something and he was he was lost it he was gone and he decided that he was going to kill the whole family and that that was that and that was also the same night when uh, her oldest brother, my uncle, decided to stand up to him. It was a very big confrontation in the living room with the whole family there. He's got a pistol. He's pointed at the whole family. And uh, my uncle, uh, the oldest uncle, stands up to his father, which is terrifying considering how much they were beaten and abused as they were raised. Uh, you know, gun to the head, telling him, he's like, no, you're not going to kill anybody tonight. It's just not, no, this is not going to happen. You're going to put that gun away and you're going to leave. And 
that doesn't sound like a very paranormal experience except for the fact that my family, my grandmother and my mother, now my grandmother's not necessarily a nice person, or not, not a lot of people on my, on my other side of the family are remotely close to normal or straight-laced or nice by any means, they claim to have seen an angel standing behind my uncle. I was not there for this. I've heard the story several times from several people, and it's all about the same. They all say that they saw an angel standing behind him. I don't know if you're religious or spiritual or what. That's what they say, and that's all that I can report it, that uh, standing up to his father, who they were all terrified of, gun in his head, telling him that, no, you're not going to kill anybody tonight. Uh, neither my uncle, the eldest uncle, or the father, supposedly. I never met the guy. He died soon after I was born, got out of prison. Uh claim to have seen anything, but the rest of the family said that they were being protected by angels. Uh, that does kind of remind me, I know I said I was only going to tell one of my stories, I only had one other story to tell, uh, that uh, it was not a lie, it was a mistake, because as I was telling this, I remembered uh, the sleep paralysis, and I remembered something very different. Uh, back in the days, I used to run a clan called uh, MRX Clan on Unreal Championship in 2001, in early 2000, well, late 2000, when Xbox Live was brand new. And I was still having the dream problems then, uh, very narrative, so I ran a little GeoCities website. It was very crappy, Matrix-themed. And I would write these down with my 8th and ninth grade uh, uh, literature skills, which were poor, to say the least. These stories of my dreams. Lots and lots of stories, and e even through the poor writing, most of the people in the clan enjoyed them, and I wrote them, much like I, I tell the Epic Dream series here. Matter of fact, the Drifter, the Demon Slayer, if you saw that video, its first form was there on the uh, MRX Clan website. If you have the Wayback Machine, you might could find it. And one of the things that I found odd was I, I, I'm a little bit narcissistic, maybe. I like to Google myself. I like to see what other people are saying about me, what's going on. And I kept, I typed in my name, you know, DRIFT0R on Google way back in the day, probably... God, 2002, 2003, maybe, internet, and there were a couple of search results, but one very near the top was interesting to me. It was like, uh, it said, Drifter and his uh, horrifying dreams, or his astounding dreams, and something like that, and the odd thing was that Drifter was spelled wrong. It didn't have a, uh, the letter O or the number zero. It was with an E, but it was all about this guy named Drifter and his weird dreams, and when I clicked on the link, it brought up a very weird page. It had a beige background, uh, black text, no underlying shadow. In the middle of the page was a guy sticking his dick in some girl's ass, just like as hardcore as it could be, cock going right in. But the text on the page was so disturbing, so weird at the time. It was all about uh, Drifter, me, and the dreams that I'd been having. Very short, broken sentences that were that alluded to things that I had written about but didn't necessarily make a lot of sense as if they were written by a person that didn't speak English or uh, uh, maybe were just regurgitated at random. And I found it weird that they were they were talking or whatever, whoever in the site was talking about me and my dreams and expecting more and wanting more, uh, me to write more and do more. And I found it disturbing. I, I closed the link immediately, a little bit because it was porn and my dad was home because, you know, the dick in the ass thing. And But mostly because I just didn't like it. And later that day, I wanted to show it to one of my friends, so I tried to get the same, like I typed in the same search, I think it was actually using AltaVista at the time, because that was really balling back in the day, and the link was gone. I mean, it, it's like AltaVista updated overnight, the website didn't exist, I searched for the exact same search, found nothing, I searched for... Um, I believe what I remember to be snippets from the uh, website. It's been so long, I wish I could remember the exact wording, but I can't. Found nothing. I mean, I went through like 20 pages, and it was just gone. It was like right after I had seen it the very next day, it dropped off the face of the earth and didn't exist, and everybody thought that I was half crazy. So I don't know what's with that. That's probably easily explainable by uh, a creepy fan of some sort and a, a, a search engine update, but it was very conveniently timed and disturbing all at once. Now, those are the end of the stories that I have to tell, but everybody likes this uh, ghost story suit. Everybody wants me to continue and tell more, and unfortunately I can't tell anymore because I don't have any stories, and I don't actively go ghost hunting or uh, anything like that, so I, I don't really plan on going ghost hunting. It's an exper it's an expensive habit where you're really not going to find anything. So, now, I do want to continue this story because I, I am interested in paranormal things, and obviously my subscribers are as well. And there were uh, two, maybe three ways I could think about doing this. 
The first way is this ghost story series could transition into a series on a, a topic of the paranormal. Of one week it'll be ghosts, the next week it'll be demon, then we're doing psychics, then we're doing Bigfoot, then we're doing aliens. This isn't going to be necessarily story-based as it would be a commentary and explanation of more scientific, rational base, which uh, most of you that like the ghost stories probably wouldn't like because even though I have experienced these things, I'm very skeptical of them and I come down pretty hard on people that have extraordinary claims, which if you have an extraordinary claim, you should have extraordinary evidence. The next idea was to get guests, uh, subscribers, other commentators, anybody on the YouTubes that's interesting that has a story to tell and uh, can tell it in a competent way. That's one of the hardest things about my inbox is a lot of people like to share stories with me, but their writing skills aren't very uh, good and it's, it's very difficult to read. That's possible. We could get subscribers on here telling stories, get on Skype, uh, we'll record it and talk about it. I'll again probably come down hard on you guys, God forgive me. And then there is another option, a third option. I'm, I don't know if I'm pushing copyright a little bit here, but I could probably get on reddit.com slash nosleep or 4chan.org slash x slash and uh, start reading creepypasta or reading or uh, retelling some of the scary stories on there. I don't know if that's a violation of copyright or not, as none of that material really has an author or a claim holder or anything like that that I know of. But I try not to break rules and I try not to rip people off without giving credit because that's just not right. Right, so those are the three options. We can have a host-based show, like a, like I'll host the show and talk about a topic. We could have a subscriber or other commentator's guest tell their stories, and I'll be here as well for questions. Or we could move into a No Sleep or 4chan X style slash creepypasta reading session or story elaboration or something like that. You guys need to let me know what you want, and I'll see to it to accommodate to that. Now. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I had actually had a little bit of extra time here. I think I'm about to get killed as I come around this corner. This is the closest I've ever came to a Moab, which is very sad, sad to say. Only like 17 gun kills. Like, I've shot this guy 17 times. Surely one more bullet and nope, there were two of them. Fuck me. Well, I hope you enjoyed the commentary. Uh, Drifter out.